Let me just send this to. Hmm. Okay. That's NK. Yeah. Uh, good evening, my name is Marcia Downey and I'm the chair of this evening's Bayside City Council local planning panel. And we had a number of people um, listening to us and um, watching the meeting on team. So welcome and thank you for joining the meeting this evening. Um, I need to go through some administrative information uh, before we I'll begin the uh, work on tonight's development application. So before I do that, I would just like to, on behalf of Bayside City Council and on behalf of the panel, um, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the answers to their um, elders. Um, so the purpose of the Bayside Planning Panel is consider planning proposals uh, and development applications that fall into various different categories, including where the value of the work is less than $30 million, where there is a potential conflict of interest, where it's contentious development, where there's a substantial departure from development standards, or where it's sensitive development. Uh, in those cases, Council no longer considers these types of developments and the planning panel uh, is the determining authority for those developments. So tonight's development application is contentious because a number of submissions have been received in relation to the development application, and that's why it's before the panel is proceeding. Um, in particular, the panel must consider development applications which have attracted 10 or more submissions, and that's, that's the category for this development application, and that's why we're considering it. Uh, the public meeting is being recorded and is live streamed to Council's YouTube page. And this recording is an official record of Council and may be uh, made available to uh, any person who makes a request under the Government Information and Public Access Act. Uh, applicants and members of the public that have registered to speak um, are asked, will be asked to unmute, unmute your phone or computer at the relevant time to address the panelists. So when it's your time, I'll call your name and you can unmute your phone, uh, phone or computer and um, make whatever submissions you'd like to make to the panel. If I could ask everybody otherwise to keep your phones and computers on mute, and that just means you don't have background noise, um, which disturbs the meeting. One, once the panel has heard from all the speakers, including the applicants, um, we will uh, adjourn to consider our decision. Um, and all the decisions of the panel are published on the website, uh, generally within one week of the meeting. So before we commence, um, we will introduce ourselves and I'll go first. As I said, my name is Marcia Downey. I'm the chair of this evening's meeting and my um, background and expertise is in planning law and public administration. I've worked for a number of councils and for private law firms and also in state government. I chair uh, other planning panels and I'm also involved in uh, some other government committees and uh, some, some boards. Uh, Robert, I think I'll ask you to introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Robert Montgomery, I'm a town planner. Um, my background is in local government and state government, uh, both in town planning and, and manage various management roles. Um, for the last 15 years or so, I've uh, operated my own town planning practice and uh, I'm also chair uh, another local planning panel uh, and sit as an expert member on a number of others. Thank you. It's my name is John Brady. I'm a uh, town planner, registered planner with the Planning Institute of Australia. I'm also a landscape architect. Um, I've had Says 35 years experience in, in planning, uh, essentially in private practice. Um, I sit on uh, another three panels in Sydney and on a, uh, and on a um, design review panel uh, at Lake Paul. Good morning, I'm Anna Pompos. I'm a resident of Bexley for 15 years. I'm a member of the panel acting as a community representative. Um, my background is in policy. I've worked for over 25 years with state government on planning, policy and development policy, and also some other 
sustainability policies. I'm currently a senior policy advisor with the Office of the Vice Chancellor for the University of New South Wales. And I'm also a member of other assessment panels, uh, one especially with the Department of Free Rate Cabinet on Community Infrastructure. Thanks, panel. And we also have with us in the meeting um, of council staff who have been involved in this development application, and uh, Mr. Ben Tesiero, who was the um, independent assessor for this development application. It was independently assessed because the development application proposes uh, development on, on land which is actually owned by council. So in those situations, uh, generally an independent person who's not employed by council conducts the assessment of the development application and that's um, what happened in this case. So uh, do we have any disclosures of interest in relation to this site? Uh, nothing from me, so no, no, no interest. And uh, each of the panel members has signed declaration uh, that they have no conflicts of interest in relation to this now. Uh, and the panel notes that the uh, minutes of the previous planning panel meeting held on the 18th of April 2023 have been confirmed as a true record of proceedings by the chairperson of that meeting. So that brings us to the business for tonight's meeting, which is a development application um, at 72 Laycock Street, Bexley North. And the development application is for um, alterations and additions to an existing um, bowling club uh, to um, continue that, that use. Uh, the panel um, had the opportunity this afternoon to attend the summit with the Council staff. We had a briefing. Um, and have the opportunity to ask questions of uh, uh, Mr. Tesiero and the council staff about the site and about the development application. And we uh, travelled around the, the um, entirety of the boundary to um, look at the houses that are um, adjacent to the site. And we could also obviously see the other houses that uh, are in the locality. Uh, we've also read the development assessment report, which is on Council's website, which I assume has been read by uh, many of the people who registered to speak tonight and who have also provided submissions. That written um, report um, summarised the submissions that had been made by members of the community in relation to the development application. And so the panel has had the opportunity to consider all of the submissions that have been made, the points made, and also the later submissions that were made once the council report went on to the website, which I think was the last week. So the panel notes that we had written submissions um, on the assessment report from Mr. Fu Kim Ki, Ms. Denise Perrin, Ms. Grace Maleski, Mrs. Ingrid Knott. Mr. Spiros Nikolopoulos and Mr. Nick Gilio. Um, those people have made submissions on the assessment report and the panel has, had, has received copies of those submissions and has read each of the submissions. Uh, we have registered to speak. Uh, Mrs. Lilda Speranza, Mr. John Davis Davidson, Mr. Gordon Bay, and Ms. Nicole Vermastos. Um, and this means uh, in support of the recommendation to refuse um, the development application. And we have a number of people uh, registered to speak on behalf of the African uh, who wish to speak against the recommendation to refuse the application. So what I will do is um, work through the uh, four people who are registered to speak against the recommendation, starting with Mrs. Speranza, and then I'll invite the applicant's team to just say anything that they would like uh, in, about the application and to address the issues that have been raised uh, in the assessment report and also by the um, objectives to the application. Um, the, each speaker has three minutes uh, within which to uh, address the panel 
and um, if you go beyond that three minutes, you'll hear a bell, and that means it's time to, to make your final points and, and finish your submission. So I think that's all. Yep. So I'll invite uh, Ms. Milda Speranza to address the panel. Thanks, Ms. Speranza. Hello, uh, thank you. Good, good evening to everyone on the um, Bayside Local Planning Panel Committee. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. Um, my name is Milva Speranza. I'm a local resident and concerned neighbour, and um, I fully support the refusal recommendation as per the planning assessment report by Ben Tessarero at Creative Planning Solutions. In his report, the assessment clearly um, outlines numerous problems with the DA application as it has been submitted. The key issues, but not limited to these, there are many others, is the, um, the usage of the property, which is prohibited um, as an event space um, under the planning. Also, inappropriate hours of operation um, the noise level, which is something that I'm very concerned about, noise and parking and um, the excessive um, traffic flow as well to the um, quiet local residential area. And these are just a few of the key issues that were outlined in the report that um, as residents, we, we've raised these numerous times with the council throughout the whole DA process. I'm extremely concerned about the detrimental impact that this development will have on the local community and also um, the local residents in and around the, um, the bowling club precinct. Um, I don't think it's a good proposal in terms of the, the benefit to the communi community. There does not seem to be an overall benefit to the community. It's clear from the DA that this development is of a commercial nature for private wealth creation of a HEPA, exclusively for a HEPA. It does not have any benefit for the local residents or the community, which is very disappointing and very concerning. A development of this type is not suitable for a low density residential area. Um, this this club should be returned back to the community for, um, for community use as it is public property, not private property for private wealth gain. Um, also, given the financial issues of AHEPA, it's very disappointing that the council continues to grant them the lease to this public property. In summarising, um, I'd just like to say that this development will be um, a, a negative impact on the community. It will exclude the local community and create divisions within the community. Um, I strongly urge the planning committee that this DA submission by a, a HEPA must not be approved as it will have a detrimental effect on the quiet local residential area of Bexley North. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saranza. Um, panel members, do you have any questions or comments in relation to Saranza's um, submission? Uh, just one question, Mr. Saranza. Where is your uh, <clears throat> pardon me residence in in relation to? I'm like in Coveney Street, and I also have a residence on Laycock Street, which is directly um, adjacent to the club. So Laycock Street and Coveney Street. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Speranza. I don't have any questions for you, but thank you for your um, submission. Thank you. Uh, John Davidson is also an effective name. They continue to start by telling us where you live in relation to. Yeah, we're 68 Laycock Street. So we're the second house down on Laycock Street from the development. And we've been there for 25 years. And um, as per the earlier speaker, we support the planning assessment report that rejected a HEPA's uh, DA submission because we think the DA in its current form will have a real negative effect on our low density residential community. 
we're, we're not particularly against the development of the bowling club by a Hepper or others, as it certainly needs investment. It's certain that it's just the certain aspects of a Hepper's DA and the plan of management that we can't support. Our, our major concerns are the noise, the late night finishes in the DA and the plan of management are so out of character with our area that they they can't but negatively affect our residents. And an example of that I would give is when it was a bowling club, the bowling greens on the Oliver Street side, there was nothing happened once it got dark. Now we're going to have the situation where there'll be people coming out onto those uh, where the greens were after midnight, after having a big night out and starting their cars and exiting the car park. And there seems to be nothing in the DA or plan of management that protects residents from the changes. The second thing about, there seems to be a lack of clarity around functions. The bowling club hosted a small number of functions annually, which mostly finished at reasonable hours and had maybe 100 to 150 patrons, whereas a Hepper are requesting approval for 300 pa patrons and have not put a cap on the function numbers. And, and we feel that we need a formal cap on the function numbers as a, Hep a Hepper may push for more functions for financial need. We need a reduction in the patron numbers, in part because of the noise, but also the lack of parking and the lack of accessible transport at night. And thirdly, we're very disappointed in the, the plan of management, which could have made residents feel much better about this development, but unfortunately adds very substance, little substance to the discussion. In actual fact, it's one of the worst documents in my 35 years of, of work that I've seen. It doesn't address things like <clears throat> employing external security staff to ensure patrons do not disturb the residents, especially when arriving, leaving or being ejected. It doesn't address transport or the lack of it at night. It doesn't address the car parking shortfall. I'm assuming they can't do maths, but that doesn't address the car parking shortfall at all and the Im or the possible impact on residents parking as patrons are going to have to park uh, where residents currently park. And, and again, there's no firm cap on the number of functions or the possibility of reducing patron numbers. And again, it doesn't, the plan of management doesn't address the possibility of the completely out of character operating uh, hours that they've got. So I just thought that the plan, the plan of management could have really assisted here, but it, they just, it's basically a flimsy document that didn't help uh, at all. So that, they're my comments and thank you. Any question, Mr. Uh, I don't have any questions either, so thanks very much for um, addressing the panel. Um, and next we have Mr Gordon Fay, who's also an affected neighbour. Mr Fay, if you uh, could please um, advise the council, the panel uh, where you live in relation to the development side. You're on mute, Mr Fay. No. Yeah. Thank Thanks very much for um, yeah hearing us this evening um, to the panel. Uh, I live at um, directly opposite the uh, bowling club in um, Laycock Street, and uh, I've been a resident of almost uh, 40 years um, uh, in this area. Uh, as, as the previous two speakers have stated, um, I'm in full support of the independent planning assessment report compiled by uh, Creative Planning Solutions and also the report to the uh, local planning panel by the Director of City Futures. Um, 
Yeah, I'm extremely concerned with a number of aspects uh, of this development, and a lot of those have been highlighted um, in both the uh, in the planning assessment report. The uh, the ones that uh, I'm uh, concerned about is the lack of uh, the development uh, for general community use, um, which uh, the bowling club. Um, previously um, gave access to uh, a number of the local residents and um, and yeah and in in terms of their health and well-being um, and also we saw local school children um, who were uh, also uh, utilizing the bowling green uh, for sports um, during school periods uh, also of concern is the increase in the in the traffic to the area. Um, uh, as John has stated, that uh, you know at, at maximum capacity, it's looking at 300 uh, patrons, um, and also addition also additional staff during that time as well. Um, the impact on uh, on the local area in terms of traffic would be. Um, quite horrendous at those times and also given that um, there's only 78 designated car parking spaces um, on the plans and that would therefore um, increase the amount of uh, on-street parking uh, in the in the area. Also the movement of the bus stop in Edward Street uh, which is approximately 40 metres to the west of the current location I believe will potentially present increased risk of accidents uh, to the intersection of Edward Street and Laycock Street um, due to reduced line of sight for vehicles exiting uh, Laycock Street. Uh, also, in addition, a significant number of pedestrians, particularly children, cross at this intersection on the way to and from Gilchrist Park and Bexley North Railway Station. And children quite often ride their bicycles around the streets and on footpaths in the vicinity of the community of the proposed um, uh, club. Also, the traffic impact um, assessment doesn't take into account when bus services um, uh, discontinue at the closest bus stop to the club venue, um, but only of their frequency when operating. For example, bus route 410 from Hurstville to Macquarie Park ceases approximately Monday to Friday at 9.03 p.m and Saturdays at 8.35 p.m. and Sunday and public holidays at 8.40 p.m. Um, and so you can have a look at other bus routes and they have a, a similar timing as well. Um, traffic study also grossly understates the potential of proposed club to hold special events and large functions during a typical year. Uh, in the final years of the bowling club, uh, functions were held both Friday and Saturday evenings on a regular weekly basis. The worst case scenario of an, event, of an event or function being held on both a Friday and Saturday night, 52 weeks a year should be assumed. Uh, also, there will be an increase in commercial delivery vehicles to the area, which will generate additional noise and exhaust pollution, as well as increased wear and tear on local resident, residential roads. Uh, I also note in the plan of management that um, vehicles can deliver up to 7 p.m. in the evening. Uh, we also. Um, if, I, if I can ask you to make your final point because your, your time is actually yeah. gone. Right. Also, the hours of operation. Um, I uh, through to especially Friday, Saturday, and Sundays through to 1 p.m. is um, yeah is is just. Uh, unbelievable in a low residential area um, surrounded by um, yeah, basically basal local residential housing. Uh, so in summary, yeah, I, I agree with um, all the previous um, uh, points noted by previous speakers and also strongly support the recommendation by the independent report. Thank you. Bye. Any questions from the panel, Mr. Clay? No. No. Thanks very much for your submission. And our last speaker um, in support of the officer's recommendation is Ms. Ms. Nicole from Arstos. Hello, can everyone hear me? We can, yeah. thank you. 
Perfect. OK, um, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Nicole from Mastos. I'm speaking on behalf of, well, broadly speaking, my neighbours and the community, but also my parents, Chris and Angela Kramastos. Uh, we have been residents for 20 odd years. We live in Laycock Street and have another property in Oliver. Uh, so on both sides of the proposed development. I strongly support the third party recommendation by Ben and encourage the council to reject the DA put forward by a HEPA uh, to cite a few of the issues that have been noted in both the report agenda and by my fellow neighbours. Um, the noise impact, the car parking, safety and security, hours of operation, the incompatibility with the area, the social impact, and of course, the public interest. Um, I might just call out a few key points here. In terms of the noise impact, as we know, the proposal is not suitable for a low density area. The recommendation does also note that the noise min mitigation measures proposed will inadequately limit noise. It is a low density suburban area, and that's a key factor and concern for all of the residents. Um, safety and security. The DA proposes operating hours as late as 1 a.m. on some days in high density areas, inclusive of central CBD that have bars, pubs and clubs. The majority do actually close at 12 a.m. and that is due to noise pollution and of course concern for the neighbours. Um, an initial DA in a low density suburban area with operating hours outside of a standard nine till five um, business hours is obscene. However, the progression of the DA as approved by the council up until this point is the core issue here that we found today. Um, it is completely understandable, I guess, that a private entity operating solely for monetary gain would make an application whereby they will try and operate outside of the public interest and what is best for the community. It is up to those people who do have the responsibility to ensure that they're acting on our behalf um, when us, the residents, are unable to do so. In terms of the public interest, again, I'll just touch on this very quickly. Uh, the development has been solely proposed for monetary gain by a private organisation, being a HEPA. This is not um, the this is not how council land and resources should be utilised and progression of this to this point is highly concerning to myself, my parents and also the community as you've heard today. Um, one key point I'd like to note as per the agenda as well is the contentious development, the notification of the DA attracted 59 unique submissions um, with the majority of submissions being largely and strongly opposed to the development. These submissions cited all of the core faults of the submission mentioned above and mentioned by my peers today. Um, and overall outline and strongly reiterate the ill-fitting nature of the development application. It has been extremely disheartening to say the least to have to continue to fight for our right to safety, stability and our own best interest. So I urge anyone who is in a position to do so to act on our behalf where we can't. Um, so therefore, I strongly urge the council to exercise their responsibility to act in the best interest of the community and support the recommendation to refuse the development. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kramastos. Any questions? From the panel? No, thank you very much. <laughs> Clear submission, so uh, we don't have any questions for you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So that completes the um, people ready to speak against the recommendation. And we have uh, we have eight people registered to speak. Um, sorry, I think I might have just said against. We just heard from the people who, who spoke for the recommendation of refusal. And I, we have eight people registered to speak against the recommendation of refusal. Um, I'm thinking that we probably don't need to hear from each of those people, but I'll leave it to the applicant um, to decide who you would like to have addressed the, um, the panel. So the first person we have registered to speak is Harry, Mr. Harry Pandarkis. Were you going to speak or who's, who's leading the applicant's team? Um, Madam Chair, Bernard Moroz here on the town planner. Um, may I suggest that I just, um, I, I lead it um, and I can kick it off and then I can direct any 
I guess, commentary to any other parties present. Very much. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, panel members. Um, Lisa, I'll try and keep my part brief because I'm, I'm hoping to open up some discussion to the experts we have here. Um, I guess I guess from the onset, I think we need to, to all uh, identify that this site does benefit from existing use rights. Um, I don't think that was disputed uh, within the town planning assessment report. Um, uh, again, there were some matters raised in terms of character, site suitability, public interest and the like, but um, I won't go into detail uh, for those. I'm happy to come back, um, I, I guess, once we talk to the other experts. Just some matters, um, panel, I'd like to just point out, um, just reviewing the report. Um, I, I'm just struggling to, to find out how, I guess a lot of the commentary was made by the consultant planner that, that appears contrary to, uh, I guess, internal referrals um, and other, I guess, um, details provided during the assessment process. Um, again, the, the report wasn't paragraphed, so apologies. So I've just, I've just taken parts out. I can't refer you to a specific paragraph, but I'll just, I'll just go through a couple of them. Um, through the report, um, there's a response from Council's Senior Environmental Health Officer dated 11th April 23 that actually considered the noise impact assessment and the POM and the revised plan submitted in response to the RFI is acceptable and in support of the DA. So this is coming internally from council, subject to conditions. And then the following comments were made in relation to, you know, the application by the senior EHO, like uh, still concerns with noise impacts, nighttime period, trading, et cetera. Um, which which we've noted. Um, my only question in relation to that also is the original application was reviewed by the acoustic group, and I think they were con you know external consultants. Um, they raised a number of matters which we sought to address in our revised acoustic assessment. Um, and we have the acoustic engineer here present to discuss any details. I was wondering the the outcome where I guess the town planner has come back to say that notwithstanding the EHO commentary and any documentation we've provided that the proposal is still unsuitable from noise impact grounds. And and again, I, I'm not I'm not sure what. Um, the planners' qualifications are in terms of acoustics, but I, I was wondering, was the application re-referred back to the acoustic group? Um, and with regards to council's EHO deeming it okay, how has it been concluded that it's unacceptable from a noise impact perspective, I guess, by the person preparing the report? I think secondly also, I just wanted to raise in terms of parking, and we do have our expert um, traffic parking consultant here. Um, there was, I mean, there was a lot of toing and froing with this application. The last most recent RFI we received was dated 20 December 22. And the only outstanding matter related to parking, let's call it a traffic generation, um, was talking about end of travel facilities. There was nothing raised further in terms of council's engineer with respect to parking and traffic impacts. Um, there's also a comment in the report that says council's development engineer has suggested car park lighting could be conditioned in the event of a DA approval. However, uh, the planner who prepared the report said again this is deemed inappropriate in the circumstances. So I'm just seeing a lot of, uh, I mean, internal recommendations by either the EHO or the internal traffic engineer who I, I couldn't see raising any further issues with respect to the proposal, yet the person who's actually prepared the report seems to go against um, these recommendations. So I was just, I just wanted some clarity on that panel because um, I, I just see a bit of inconsistency there and I just wanted to see how all these matters arose. Um, yeah. But moving forward, because I think I'm getting close to the three minutes panel, we've got our, um, I mean, we've got our design architect here. We've got um, the AHEPA president and a representative. 
Um, we've also got our um, traffic and parking expert and our acoustic expert. So um, we're open to, to answer any questions that, um, that you may have. Thanks, Mr. Laura. I've been Tessie Rare. I can't say. Being Tessie Rare. Tessie Rare. Tessie Rare. Tessie Rare. Who, who did the assessment to just um, provide a response to those two uh, questions that you asked about the um, traffic and parking and about the acoustic reports. Thank but you. I want to just make a comment for the sure. other side. Yeah. Um, Mr. Moros, the, the answer to your question is self-evident. Mr. Cesarero is an independent, independent of the council. So his role is to take on board the comments that are made and make a recommendation. So I'm sorry, I, Ben, you can speak for yourself, but yeah, that's self-evident. Yeah, no, I think I, I agree with that. I think it was just a question about process, about about what went back and what, whether the uh, the later acoustic report was referred back to the council staff. So it was just about the, the so I, I completely agree with what you've said. But it's <laughs> Uh, duty to conduct an independent assessment on the information available to him. But I will just ask you to just answer the questions about the process that was undertaken. Sure. Um, so, Mr. Moros was reading from page 37 of the report um, regarding the environmental health referral response. The five preceding pages. Um, all deal with people in my opinion on development is inappropriate from the point of that perspective. Despite the environmental health officer's um, referral response, but I did point out that even though the environmental health officer um, indicated that the, the, the development may be supportable subject to conditions, I put a couple of extracts in there from their referral response to have um, significant reservations about doing so, um, and I don't know if I need to read from it, but uh, it's quite clear that in his professional opinion, that is the environmental health officers, that they believe that during the night time period, um, there still will be an impact to neighbouring residents, um, irrespective of the noise mitigation measures suggested in the use of um, Similarly, in relation to uh, the traffic um, and parking referral response. <clears throat> um, I did write in my report quite clearly that the council development engine has suggested that car parking might could be conditioned. But I, I then go on to explain the reasons why I believe that's been appropriate in circumstances that kicking the can down the road of environmental assessment of um, the impacts of such lighting on the lawyers and every area is inappropriate and have to be better dealt with um, as part of the assessment of the application. Yes, and, and just on that, it's, it's the panel's job to determine the development application before it, and it's their job to assess the development application before it. So he absolutely has to take into account whatever information is provided to him by council staff and any and, and all the information provided by the applicant. It's his assessment. And um, there's only so far that conditions of consent can go before you start, you know, changing the application that's actually being assessed. But I think that those answers, have, those responses, have um, address those questions that you asked. Madam, sorry, Madam Chair, I do appreciate that, but the the report was, or the report refusal was based. Um, for most part, um, notwithstanding the plan of management, on on noise and traffic issues. So, Morris, I I don't think that's right. I think anyone reading the development assessment report um, has identified. You know, you can identify a number of issues. Yes, traffic was really important, and parking and noise and acoustic issues are important. But there are other issues as well. Um, Including you know security, um, the lack of public transport, etc., um, the hours in particular. So there are many issues that have been identified in that report. And I, I, I don't I don't agree that it's it's just. 
Oh, I, I appreciate that, Madam Chair, but the matters in relation to noise and acoustics flow on to operating hours as well. So I, I just the only reason I just sought clarity is because we we were not made aware of any further traffic impacts by that green travel plan. And throughout reading that report, there appears to be a number of unaddressed traffic and noise matters, which we feel as though we'd had addressed through that. And that's why, um, and I, I'm not saying this to, to be difficult in any way, but we were just hoping that once we provided the acoustic report, it was going to get re-reviewed by the party who initially provided commentary, just so we can actually see what position we're in. Um, and that's all I was just trying to say there, Madam Chair. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks, Mr. Morris. Is there anything else that you wanted to say to the panel? No, Madam Chair, it's open to if you had any further questions to, I guess, uh, the board of our HEPA, the members or our traffic or acoustic consultant, they're all here. Um, I mean, they're happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much. Um, I, don't Thank have, you. I have a few comments that I'd like to make, if, um, but I don't have any questions, but I'll invite the panel to ask any questions or to... No questions? No. Okay. All right, well, look, um, I can say that the panel has um, discussed this development application and it does raise uh, a significant number of, of, of issues and the panel uh, will be determining to refuse the development application. But we think it's really important that, that the applicant um, really take on board how important it will be for any future development application that, that the front and centre, the other side, this side is in the middle of a, a quiet, low density residential area. And you heard some of the neighbours say that they don't expect the site to be empty. They, they, you know, they're comfortable with, with another bowling club or some other club there, but it has to take into account um, that fact that people live there, and it's it's not it's not in a high density residential area. It's a low density residential area, so it's very quiet. Um, you've got two residences that directly, it's less than one metre setback from the existing club building and the, the and two and two residences, one at the back, one on the side. So that's a very very close proximity. Anything that happens in that club is going to have a, a, a very direct on I think you shouldn't do it. So um, I, I just, on behalf of the panel, want to just be really clear that we, we're sure that you have understood and thought about what you're doing, but any future DA that you submit needs to be really, really clear exactly what it is that you're proposing, the detail of the events, functions, people, um, with crystal clarity so that there are no questions in anyone's mind about what's going to happen on that site, which if, if you know, you, you would appreciate, if you were living there, you wouldn't want any questions. You want it to be very, very clear so that everybody understands what's going to be happening there. And I actually think that those hours, um, uh, they're just too late to expect that um, it will be, you know, that, that, that it, it's acceptable to be, having events and other things which finish at 11 o'clock on a weeknight and, and 1 a.m. on weekends when the look, the houses are so close to that um, to that to that site. So um, I know you put a lot of work into the application and I don't want to be disappointed. Madam, sorry, Madam Chair, uh, this is the President. Um, we I still want like to speak. Um, and and you too. And, and the applicant wants to speak as well. It's fine if you can just let me finish what I was speaking, which is just to say that this development application has not had sufficient information. It hasn't had the clarity that's needed. It hasn't had the precision that's needed in terms of what is proposed, the volume and nature of what's proposed, and it doesn't reflect the importance of not impacting adversely on the local community noise, security, parking, parking, uh, public transport, all of those issues are very important and they need to be squarely and accurately and comprehensively addressed. So that's all I wanted to say, but please go ahead. Uh, so Mr. 
I appreciate the feedback, Madam Chair. Thank you. So, Mr. Scandalakis, did you want yes. to speak? Yes, um, uh, Madam Chair. Maybe I should speak first. Um, yeah, um, uh, the applicant, Harry Scandal, um, Harry mm -hmm. Fandakis, would like to speak first. Uh, Mr. Fandakis, thank you. Go yeah. again. Yes. Uh, good evening, panel. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to speak on uh, on this application tonight. Uh, my name is Harry Fandakis and I am uh, the applicant and a member of the Committee of Management of AHEPA, New South Wales. Uh, obviously, we are very disappointed by the recommendation because we believe that we have addressed and we actually have come to an agreement uh, earlier this year at the meeting that we had uh, with Council. We have, we have notes of that meeting and nothing in that note says that we haven't addressed the issues that were discussed and agreed with the architect. Uh, AHEPA tended on the basis of an existing club uh, with a function room capable of 300 people. This was and still there was and still is a big sign on the side which advertises function room for 300 people available for hire. I wonder whether you've seen that sign when you visited the site. Uh, the council conceded and accepted our tender mainly because we propose to spend four and a half million dollars in two stages to optimize the use of the site, which was a condition in the in the original tender. Unless the tenderer proposed an optimization of the site, there would not have been a tender now on the site. To satisfy our submission back then, we proposed to renovate the existing bowling club uh, and in addition, construct a multi-purpose hall uh, with a substantially bigger patronage than what was the old clubhouse. We did withdraw the proposal because there was an adverse community reaction. With the current proposal, we have gone back to the original club capacity, but we have provided 80 new car spaces, a lot more than the original club, which had none. There was no parking before. We propose to renovate the function room to a reduced 250 people. We have actually reduced the original capacity. And we also propose to construct a smaller bowling green, even though there are no bowlers left from the original team that were playing back in 2018. The last bowlers were four ladies who informed us in July 2018 that they will cease using the facilities. AHEPA was maintaining a bowling green just for four ladies back in 2018. In our current proposal, we try very hard to renovate the existing clubhouse so that it becomes a useful community facility with a nice restaurant, a coffee shop, parking, and some outdoor facilities, which is very popular today. And this is not for our use. It's, it's also used for the use of, of, of all the community. We still see that there is certain reactions by people, and we've heard them tonight as well, and that still disappoints us further because people believe that AHEPA wants to create a commercial type club or a function center. This is absolutely not the case. AHEPA is a community not for profit association. We do not want to create a function center. If we did, we will go and buy one, a ready made one. We want to create a community club with a function room to be used for community needs, educational events, arts and crafts exhibitions, and other cultural events. AHEPA is not looking to create a commercial uh, type club. This is not the purpose of the existence of the association. To support this point, I would like to inform the panel that AHEPA will not install any poker machines in the building, which is unheard of. We are not installing poker machines, which are the big money spinners. Why are we doing it? Because we are putting community first. We believe that it's in the interest of the community not to have poker machines. And you can, this can be imposed as a condition of consent. Moving on to the submission, we found ourselves in a very, very undesirable position. Um, we could just to scandalize this. If I yes. can just ask you to, um, we have to, we have to be fair to all speakers. We give each speaker three minutes and you've gone over your time. So I'm I, um, Madam Speaker, I have five minutes. I am the applicant. That was that's what's in the letter. The letter yeah. that the council sent me says I have five minutes. I am the applicant, Madam. I'm, I'm happy. 
It's fine. If you would just like to make your last. Yeah, I am. I am. I am winding down, madam. But these are very important issues, and it's unfair for us because what I'm saying here is that with regards to the submission, we had five days to respond. Just five days to respond to this thing. Why did we have five days? This is against the law. This is against council policy. Okay. okay? Furthermore, we've requested from the council to give us the experts reports that the town planner should have based his decision upon. There was no expert report provided to us. We cannot reply to the town planner's report unless we have all those expert reports. I've been an engineer for 40 years and I've been doing this for 40 years. This is the first time that I see such a thing. In addition, in addition, there were documents that were never considered. We were requested to provide documents that were never considered. The complete scope of works, which is a vital document when we assess a, a DA. And also the quantity surveyors costing report. Both documents were requested by the council. We've given it, in, we've given it to the council, not considered. We specify in those documents the shortcomings that the town planner is referring to, the lighting, the mechanical issues, the electrical, the fire, the hydraulics, the security, the structural. These, these issues are addressed at the CC stage, not the DDA. Also, I'm going to interrupt you, please. You've gone over five minutes. And could I please have another half minute? You can't. I'm afraid you can't because um, it's not. Okay, madam, if if well, I'm just telling you that we will we will exercise definitely our rights and there's a lot of things here which need clarification and uh, we haven't given the, we haven't been given the opportunity to either represent ourselves or see any clarification from the town planner. He did a town planning report with no experts reports. It's it's unheard of. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak on behalf of the applicant? Um, yes, um, Madam Chair, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity tonight to speak. Uh, my name is Bill Scandalakis. I'm the president of a Happy New South Wales. I want to, to emphasise that we're a non-profit association and our main objectives are to promote philanthropy, culture and education. In the last 10 or 15 years, we've actually donated over a million dollars to various charities, medical uh, institutions. Um, Whatever money we raise, we actually give it out to uh, for educational purposes and everything. We're not here to, as a commercial entity, to, to raise money. Our vision is to, is for the site to to establish various programs that will support our objectives, as well as make the site available for other community groups for their use. As as it's been mentioned, the recommendation by the town plan to refuse has come as a surprise to us. We believe we have addressed the issues which were raised with the various meetings with the council officers. They've always been positive and they said, yep, this is what we want. And we've always, always replied. Yeah. I reiterate, a HEPA is committed to the project and this is shown in our signing the agreement for license and lease in May 2021 in good faith with BISO Council. We would also like to inform the panel that HEPA has been paying rents for the last four years and for the maintenance of the site as was required to go and to show that you know this is our commitment to the to the to the project needless to say we've spent substantial amount of money in producing the different submissions to the council and amendments as requested by council we believe it is a unique opportunity for everyone involved to move forward and transfer a currently underutilized and dilapidated site into a vibrant vibrant and useful community center for the wider enjoyment uh, for the wider enjoyment of the community we sincerely appreciate if you consider for a deferral of, so we can address the issues raised by the town planner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have um, a question from one of the town members. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a community representative of this panel, and I think uh, one of the things I should be asking is, um, directly coming from the concerns of our residents around the area. If I give you a scenario where uh, 200 guests from a function hosted in this venue leaves the venue at 1 a.m., there could be young people who are drunk walking 800 meters to the train station. They're, they're screaming, they're rowdy. 
Do you think that's not going to disturb the local neighborhood if that's happening? And how let, are you? Let me. Let me. Um, madam, uh, thank you for your question. If, uh, if if you have read our plan of management, you would have seen that uh, the maximum number of people that can be at the club at any one time at midnight is 100. I don't know where you get the 300. Please read the plan of management. The maximum number of people that can be inside or outside the club at midnight is 100. Please read the plan of management. Whether it's 100 or 200. No, no, no. This, please read the plan of management, the hours of operation and the patronage. The yeah. maximum number of patrons at the club at 12 o'clock is 100. If please we, read Please read the plan of management. I will. Thank you very much. If we put the numbers down to 100 and 50 of them are walking down to the station at 12 midnight, as I said, they're drunk, they're noisy, they're screaming, they're happy, they're loud, they're laughing. How can you stop the noise from disturbing the neighborhood? Are you telling me that all those 100 people will have no car? No, I just said 50. I didn't say existing use rights. We do have existing use rights before. I've been to many, many functions and the functions finished at 2 o'clock in the morning. What happened before? We tended on the site on existing use rights. There were many people on the site with no parking at all. Why is it different? You're not answering my question. Sorry? You're not answering my question. What is your question? What do I do with those people? We do have safety measures in place where we can tell them that if they do make noise, we will call the police. We tell them where the nearest station is, just like they did before. There's nothing different now. And we have reduced the numbers from 200 or 300 before to 100. Please read the plan of management. It's in there. We have restricted the numbers to 100. Now, if you're telling me that 50 of those have no cars, I don't know what to say. I really don't. But please read the plan of management. All right. Well, thank you. I think that we might draw the meeting to a close. Um, unless any Panel members have anything else that they'd like to say? Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't want to ask any questions, but I, I just want to make a comment, and it's along the lines of what you said earlier. Um, what we've heard tonight from the applicant is a whole lot of information that we can do this and we can do that. And I'm sure you can get a traffic engineer to, you know, convince, to, to make a, an argument that the parking works. And I'm sure you can get the acoustic report peer reviewed. And Mr. Um, Morozov's comments, I think, really reflect our reflection of the real problem with this application, and that is you can't solve this site in a piecemeal fashion. And that's what we've got here. We've got it. Um, we've got the applicant saying we can do this, we can do that, we can cut down from 300 to 100. That's not a problem. We'll change our plan of management. We heard tonight that there's going to be a coffee shop, but that's nowhere on the plans, and it's never been mentioned before, not that there's any problem with a coffee shop. But again, that's something different that we haven't heard before. Now, yeah, you are not reading the plans, sir. There is a coffee shop on the plans. Please, there is a coffee shop and a restaurant. Excuse me, it's not a debate. You've had your say. You're misrepresenting the facts now. Well, we're going to close the meeting because it's not a debate and I won't debate it with you. So I'll throw that to the chair. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for your attendance this evening and uh, for addressing the panel. Um, the I'll, I'll formally close the meeting now and uh, the decision of the panel will be on the council's website over the next uh, few days. Um, but um, I can say for the, for the sake of the residents that um, the panel has given them a full consideration and has determined to refuse the development application. So that's the panel's decision um, and the reasons will be on the website. And again, thank you very much for your attendance.